So now that we have added a new hard drive into our system, before we can actually do anything on it, we need to create a partition and then we need to format that partition. Now, remember in our previous video, we talked about using LSBLK to discover the identifier, in my case, dev SDB. Now, just so you know, depending on which order they go in, these identifiers can change depending on which order your drives are attached and which controller they're attached to and things like that. So in my, uh, in a previous system that I just did a little bit ago, I added a new drive and it became SDA and my, uh, primary drive on my first drive became SDB. It's not a big deal. But it does illustrate the fact that you always want to make sure you know what the drive identifier is before you start working with it. Okay, so now that we have it, we need to create a new partition on it. And we're going to do that. I'm going to switch user here for a second. The way we do that is we're going to do fdisk, and you want to make sure you put in the right identifier, dev sdb. And this will open up my fdisk utility. Now, Changes will be made in memory only. Nothing happens till you actually write it. Once you write it, then that becomes permanent. Until then, you can bail out. Nothing will ever happen. So it'll say this device, SDB, so when we identify it up here, does not contain a recognized partition table. So I'm going to type M for my help, and this is going to give me all of my commands. So I can do MD, uh, DOS, which is MBR. I can, I have generic commands, I have miscellaneous commands, script commands, save and exit. Here's my W to write the table and, or yeah, write table to disk and exit and then Q to quit without saving. Now I want to create a new partition table and I can do this using either with my lowercase g here, GPT, uh, SGI, DOS or MBR or Sun. Now I'm going to, GPT is quickly becoming the standard. Should have be considered the standard, primarily because it allows us more flexibility. With MBR, we are limited to two terabytes per disk. And if we've got more than that, we don't have a choice. We have to do a GPT. And MBR will allow you to create four primary partitions. GPT will allow you to create up to 128. So way more flexible. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to hit G to create an empty GPT partition table. And that creates a new disk, a new GPT disk label, and it gives us my Quid for it. So let me hit my M here to view my options. And now I want to create a new partition. So my new partition is going to be N right here at a new partition. So I'm going to say N. It's going to ask me what partition number. Well, my default is number one. It makes sense. So I'll just go enter and do one. Now my first sector is going to be sus. 2048. Now I could move that farther on down. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to because then I'd have empty space at the beginning of my drive and that would just be a little crazy. So I'm going to do my default of uh, 2048 as my first sector. Now this is interesting, my last sector. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I can put in my size in sectors or in um, kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, uh, terabytes, petabytes. So if I just hit enter here, it's going to set it to this number, which is going to be the last sector on my disk. Basically, it's going to say use up the whole disk. If let's say I wanted to make a 100 gigabyte partition, the way I would do it is I would do plus 100 capital G. And then we created a new partition with a size of 100 gigabytes. And then I'm going to say, give me a new one. And now notice my partition number can be from 2 to 128. I'm going to say number 2, second partition. And now notice my first sector is 100 gigabits after the start. So this is my first available. And if I hit enter that, and again, that just takes the rest of it. Now, I don't actually want that, by the way. That would give me a 100 gigabyte partition, a 27 gigabyte partition. I don't want that. So I want to create a brand new one. So I can delete my partitions. So I'm going to delete to delete. I'm going to delete partition number two. And then I'm going to delete partition number one. And notice the first time it asked me, do I want to delete one or two? The second time it just doesn't even give me the option because there's only one available for me to delete. Notice, by the way, as we're working with this, this is doesn't always ask you for a lot of prompting. Are you sure you want to do this? This partition may contain data. It doesn't do a lot of checking like that. It just does it. So that's why you always want to make sure that you're on the right uh, disk. 
Now, I'm going to go ahead and create another volume or another partition. So I'm going to do N for new partition. And I just want to use all 127 gigabytes. So I just enter through all the defaults and we've created a new partition of 127 gigabytes of type Linux file system. Now, nothing takes effect until I write it, remember? So if I quit, then all my work is lost. But I want to go ahead and W to write. And again, no prompting. It just does it. All right, let's see what this did. LSBLK. And now I'm going to see I've got SDB and I have a partition here of SDB1. It is going up from where my cursor is 127 gigabytes. It's a partition. It's not mounted yet. For that matter, it's not even formatted yet. So let's deal with that first. We're going to format it. We have to format it before we mount it. So Here's our command, mkfs, so that's make file system dot ext4. Now, obviously, here I'm formatting this with an ext4 file system. There are other file systems that we can use. You want to make sure that ext4 is a pretty standard one, so I'm just going to go with it. But, I mean, if you're really wanting to dive into it, you can look at some of the positives and negatives of other file systems and choose which one you want. And then it would be mkfs or make file system dot whatever you were using. So I'm going to specify I want dev sdb1. And that specifies the volume or the partition that I want it to format. Here we go. Discard device, creating file system, file system ID, blah, 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 and we are done. Now, at this point, this, uh, let me do an LSBLK here again. We'll see our partition. Notice it doesn't really tell us that it's been formatted. LSBLK doesn't really do that. But I now have a partition that is ready to be used. However, because it's not mounted, I'm going to need to mount it before I do anything else. That mounting is what makes it available. We're going to talk about how to do that in our next video.